This video is not titled how to beat a pusher or how to destroy a pusher. In this video, I'm going to explain to you why you are losing to pushers, because let's face it, pushers have a really good strategy. Basically, they're going to give you very soft balls and now it's going to be up to you to be aggressive. And what happens to most recreational players, they start making a lot of mistakes and end up beating themselves. Now, this is not only a problem at the recreational level, it's also a problem at the junior level and even at the elite level, maybe not so much on the ATP tour, but I do see it from time to time on a WTA tour where defensive play, whether it be moonballing, slicing or dinking the balls back can win you a lot of matches. And I'm going to explain to you why this is the case. And guys, here are some examples of what I'm talking about. Here's a slice forehand that's usually going to be short. This is going to be a tough shot to play or a moonball where the ball is going to be bouncing high on the other side. Also very little pace or the worst one of them all, a dink shot with no pace whatsoever, just a flat ball sitting there in the middle of the court and the reason why a lot of tennis players will beat themselves when they're presented with these type of shots is threefold number one players with inferior technique will have a hard time playing these type of shots because they're not getting any pace coming to them they have to generate more of their pace and they're usually gonna try to be more aggressive and with inferior technique there's gonna be a lot of mistakes the second way players struggle with these type of balls is ball recognition so they don't read these type of balls early enough therefore they're not set up properly and they end up making a lot of mistakes and thirdly and most importantly and this is where even elite players get into some trouble is shot selection so there's going to be a lot of different balls that you're going to get for example in the slice the shot selection has to be different than if you get a moon ball for example i'm going to explain each one of these factors why you struggle against defensive players in more detail and obviously if you have bad technique you're going to struggle in tennis regardless but especially when there's no pace because here's what's going to happen when you get very little pace coming at you you're going to have to swing harder because you're not using as much pace from the incoming ball and anytime this is the case the chances of missing are going to be a lot higher so when you swing faster there's more of a likelihood that you're going to make a mistake so it is of the utmost importance when you face someone who doesn't give you a lot of pace that your technique is sound you have to learn the fundamentals of your strokes in order to have a chance to beat the defensive player and the second factor why you struggle against defensive players is ball recognition and ball recognition is something that high level players do not struggle with so much but recreational players have a very difficult time recognizing what type of ball they're getting so for example they're standing at the baseline and now someone gives them a slice that ends up being inside the service line they recognize this type of ball too late and then they're scrambling forced to hit the ball off balance on the run and therefore have more of a likelihood to make a mistake and it's not only recognizing the depth of the ball it's also recognizing how much spin or underspin the ball has also how high it's going to be and how much penetration it's going to have going through the court and how do you develop better ball recognition you have to be patient this is something that you learn over time because you're going to have to see a lot of balls coming your way to start reading them better and finally shot selection is something that even elite tennis players struggle with and is often a big problem when it comes to playing against defensive players and there's a lot of variables when it comes to playing defensive shots coming from the other side so for example if you get a slice that's short and low this is the most common mistake i see at the rec level is that players go for too much so when the ball is below your waist and you're standing close to the service line what's going to happen is you have to hit the ball up with top spin now what happens with this type of ball is that the ball is flying on a curve and since you're standing closer to the other baseline there's more of a chance to miss in other words the ball doesn't have as much space to fall down from the curve inside the court if we compare it to hitting a ball from the baseline there we have a lot more space the ball can safely fall inside the court where here we're closer and it's just a lot more difficult to bring that ball inside the baseline and often players will sail the ball along as a result of that so what do you do when you get a ball like that you have to be cautious you have to reduce your swing speed to 50 percent and just get the ball in do not go for a winner place the ball and then look to get a better chance on the next shot on the other hand if the ball is short and slow but high this is where high level players absolutely demolish these type of balls this is what high level players wait for they hit great shots from the baseline and then finally they get something mid-court that's a little bit higher and they can absolutely destroy a ball like that and they hit it for a winner almost every time
But here's the problem at the rec level. Most recreational players are uncomfortable with hitting the ball at a higher level. This is something that I personally work on with my students in every single practice session. Rec players love taking the ball at the waist and they are uncomfortable taking the ball higher between the chest and the shoulder area. Therefore, when these type of players get a ball mid-court that's higher, they do not crush it, they do not put it away, they do not demolish it. They have a very difficult time hitting these type of balls because they're uncomfortable making contact higher. And here's what happens to a ball that's struck higher compared to a ball that's struck lower from this area of the court. When we strike the ball higher, now the trajectory, it doesn't have to be up and down anymore. We can swing straight across, or if we're a little bit closer to the net, depending on the height of the incoming ball, we can also swing down on the ball. When we do that, all of a sudden the trajectory is not up and down anymore, it's more straight down and therefore these type of balls can be hit very hard without the risk of the ball going long. And what I see from a lot of recreational players is that they're uncomfortable taking the ball higher so they simply wait for the ball to drop to the waist but now they have the same problem that I mentioned previously. The ball will have to travel on a curve and cannot be hit that hard. If it's hit hard from the waist, from this area, it's gonna be a low percentage shot. So what you absolutely must do is in every practice session, include some high balls, which will not only help you putting balls away from midcourt, but will also help you if you ever face a moon baller. When you play someone that gives you moon balls, you are facing the very difficult problem of hitting the ball higher. And this is a big problem, for example, at the junior level where players are not as strong and they cannot hit winners very easily from behind the baseline. And now they're stuck uh, playing moon ball rallies. But the problem with moon balls is the same as the problem with sitter balls midcourt. Most players are uncomfortable with taking the ball higher and this is something that you definitely must include in every single practice session to have a chance to compete against a defensive type player. And the mental aspect of having to compete against these type of players is something that many players struggle with and this is also true at the elite level. So players will experience a very negative feeling generally having to play someone like that. It is not fun to play a player like that. So you're gonna have to really tough it up and try to think positively as difficult as that may be. Also, you're gonna to have to be patient and this also has to do with shot selection. You can't get frustrated and try to get these horrible points to end very fast. This is not gonna be a way to beat a player like that. It's only gonna to lead to you beating yourself. So patience is key, but it's also connected to shot selection. There are certain balls that a defensive player will give you where you can go a little bit harder if you possess the right technique. On the other hand, there's gonna be a lot of balls that a defensive player is gonna give you where you shouldn't go for a winner. So shot selection and having the patience to stay in the points longer is something that you absolutely must develop to have a chance of beating players that are very defensive. Realize that pushers have been around for decades. This has always been the case that defensive players win matches because players who struggle with the factors that I mentioned in this video will simply beat themselves and the road to victory is very hard. It's gonna be a long road of constant work that you develop, number one, your technique. Number two, you're gonna to have to have good ball recognition and most importantly, you're gonna have the proper shot selection and patience to be able to finally start beating defensive players.